as many of you know if you were watching the show the other day, I actually did go and see the unplanned movie the other night. So the, the movie, for those of you who aren't aware, it's a movie about a former Planned Parenthood employee of the year and a clinic director who actually turned over a new leaf after seeing an abortion take place and completely changed her worldview and now is a pro-life advocate. So this movie is her story, and it's not done in a documentary style. It's actually done in a narrative style. So you're, you're not going to – she does narrate a little bit, but it's not – you know what I'm saying. It's not a documentary style. It's like it's, – it's done in such a way that it's more of a storytelling mode, which I think actually hits the nail on the head. So I was going to go ahead and, and just sort of give my thoughts on it. I may – kind of accidentally slip and give away a couple of spoilers so if you're going to see it anyway and you know that you are you may want to avoid it but I really don't think I'm going to be giving any spoilers or anything that's story significant that wouldn't have already been revealed in the trailer so here we go first of all I think it's important to note critics hated it I mean critics absolutely hated it by well I say that a lot of critics hated it that would be the best way to say it it wasn't horrible but Rotten Tomatoes, which has kind of become the, the gold standard because it's a conglomerate of a lot of different critics, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 53% from the critics, and that is out of 100, so this is a failing grade. But if you're looking at the audience score, 92% of the audience, which I would be in this camp as well, loved this movie. And this is not an uncommon thing on Rotten Tomatoes where the audiences and the critics do not agree. I mean, it's not uncommon at all for critics to really love a movie and the audience hate it or vice versa. And that is really on display here with the critics versus the audience for their review. But most of the reviews that I was looking at, and these are the professional critics, the people that actually do this for a living, just about all the reviews that I was looking at, their rationale for not liking the movie has nothing to do with the movie. And I'm not saying that it doesn't have anything to do with the content of the movie or the message of the movie. I'm just saying that it's not things like that you would typically think of as how to measure a movie. In other words, the storytelling, the acting, the cinematography, uh, cinematography all of those things, most of their reasons, and there are a few exceptions, but most of their reasons seem to revolve around the fact that they don't like the politics in the movie. In other words, they're pro-abortion, the movie's anti-abortion, and, and therefore they don't like it. That seems to be the trend. And if you don't believe me, I'll just actually read some of the reviews right here. So this one is Roger Moore of Movie Nation. He says, let's just hope this latest pure flicks propaganda doesn't incite violence. This guy's really afraid that this movie is going to incite violence? I mean, it's just a blatantly obvious, stupid thing to say, especially considering that if you watch this movie, and again, this is a minor spoiler, but I don't think it's a huge deal, they actually do address that there were terrorists that attacked a abortion doctor, and they talked about, they basically don't talk about it, they, they show instead of tell, which is a good rule of thumb in a movie anyway. But they, they sort of show how scared the actress is and, and how terrifying that is, which it is. I mean, nobody should have to live in fear of that. Of course, the, the violence is wrong. But even if you took that scene out, I don't think there's any chance that this movie incites violence. But they put a scene that actually specifically decries violence in the movie. So I don't really understand his criticism there. Uh, another one, abortion is a serious topic. This movie is ridiculous. That's Jordan Hoffman from The Guardian. That's not a critique of the movie. That's a critique of your political beliefs. You're saying, well, the movie's ridiculous. That's not criticism. I mean, it's not constructive criticism for sure. There's a difference in saying, okay, well, the, this aspect of the film could have been better, and they made a couple mistakes here, here, and here. There's a big difference in that in saying, ah, it sucks. That's not a critique. And so he's saying, basically, again, because I, because I like abortion and this movie is anti-abortion, I don't like the movie. Um, another one, Adam Graham, it's strictly to rally the base. In other words, he's saying the whole point of this movie is to rally the base and create a political movement. And so I don't like the movie. Well, first of all, 
if it does rally the base, who cares? That doesn't mean that the movie is bad or good. That says nothing to the quality of the film itself. Maybe it rallies the base, maybe it doesn't, but that bears absolutely no weight whatsoever on whether or not the movie was enjoyable to watch or was a good movie versus whether it was not a good movie. So again, not a criticism, just a guy that doesn't like the politics of it. And here's another one. This is Luke Thomas of Forbes. Perhaps the most bipartisan thing I can say that is if you like Trump rallies, especially one featuring Mike Pence, this is probably the movie for you. I don't say it as a compliment, but I suspect all involved may take it as one. So first of all, openly mocking Trump supporters in his, in his review here. So that's one thing. And another, whether or not somebody likes a Trump rally or not, which, by the way, I'm not a fan of the Trump rallies. I think I've been pretty clear on that, even though I really love this movie. But whether or not somebody's a fan of a Trump rally or not and would also like the movie, that still is not a criticism of the movie itself. And that's what, it's so abundantly transparent. And like I said, there were some reviews that were a little bit more substantive and less subjective than these, but most of the negative reviews on here were just, well, I don't like the politics of the movie, and, and so because of that, I don't like the movie. That's generally what they all distill down into, and that explains why the critics really didn't like the movie, and the audience really did. 92 is an absurdly high mark on the audience like or dislike scale. So by contrast, just to give you sort of an idea of how common this sort of thing is on Rotten Tomatoes, by contrast, Captain Marvel got a 78% from the critics and a 60% from the audience. So 78, and it actually used to be higher. I believe it was 85-ish when it started. And there have been some bad reviews that came out since then. But the critics thought that it was pretty good and it's certified fresh, which means it gets a passing grade on Rotten Tomatoes. But I mean, it's getting absolutely destroyed by the audiences. And I'll say this about Captain Marvel. This isn't a review of Captain Marvel, so I'll just give my, my real quick stance on it. It's a mid-tier Marvel movie. It's all right. It's about around the caliber of Iron Man 3 or, or Thor 2. That's about where it is. It's not horrible. If you're sitting alone on the couch and you've got nothing to do on a Saturday afternoon, yeah, watch Captain Marvel. But it's not groundbreaking cinema. And so this is an example of a bunch of very far left-leaning film people that are looking at a film that has some pretty overt social justice warrior overtones that I didn't think wrecked the movie, but it certainly didn't help. And they look at that, and they really like the politics of that one, so they give it a score much higher than it probably deserves. And then they're looking at this movie, which has a political message that they don't like, and they're saying, well, the movie's bad because I don't like the political message. So, I mean, just take that with a grain of salt when you're looking at that. The critics hate it, which, I mean, if anything, makes me like the movie more. Acting in this, and I'm just going to sort of give my review of what I thought about it, the acting is pretty solid. There are a few times where I thought that the acting could probably have been better, but overall I thought great performances by the entire cast all the way around, um, especially by Ashley Brasher, who is the main character. She plays Abby Johnson and uh, also Robia Scott, who sometimes it's weird to praise the villain of the story, but she was intimidating she did a really, really good job with that character. And even though with an enemy, it's weird because the whole job is, the, the way you know that they did a good job portraying that character is that you didn't like them. She did a great job in that. I really didn't like her. I really got frustrated whenever she was on camera. And that's a good thing because that's how the villain is supposed to be portrayed. So Robia Scott, I thought, actually did a fantastic job. She may have done just as good a job as Ashley Brasher in this movie. Uh, the cinematography is surprisingly good. I actually do think the cinematography is really good. And the way that they would cut back and forth to uh, Abby and then to the abortion procedure and the way that they would build tension with it, and especially at one point that they're showing, again, I don't want to give too much away, but they're showing parts of an abortion. It is scary and terrifying, and it really is gut-wrenching, which is the point of that scene. 
And so I thought the cinematography did surprisingly well for such a low budget film and the direction was, was pretty good. A couple of weaknesses that I do want to mention, it does get a little close to having a cartoonish villain. And that's something that pure flick sometimes runs into a problem with that their villains are so overtly pure evil that it almost seems like a caricature of a villain. It came close to that at times, but it was rare that it did. And when it did, they usually walked it back and made the villain seem a little bit more human. So I actually, like I said, I thought Robia Scott did a great job with the acting of that character. And even though it got a little close to it at times, it never crossed that threshold. So even though I would be a little critical of that, it's, it's a nitpick for sure. And one other weakness that I thought in the movie, the music's just not great. It's not terrible, but it's not a soundtrack that you're going to remember is the best way to say it. it. It didn't take me out of the movie. It didn't, well, I take that back. There was one point where the music kind of took me out of the moment. And it's a very upbeat, uplifting kind of song. I don't remember what the song was. But they do it while they're trying to get all these abortions in one day because of a hurricane, which it seemed like for an anti-abortion movie, a really weird pick to have an uplifting, upbeat song and treat it as an accomplishment that they got all the abortions done. thought that was a weird pick for that point in the movie. But uh, that was really my only criticism. And when you consider the entirety of the movie and how good I thought it was, those are nitpicks at best. Overall, a fantastic film. It looks like we have a caller on line one, so let's go ahead and go to the phones. Good afternoon. What's on your mind? Hey, good afternoon. Yeah, I wanted to put my two cents in on it, too, since I saw it last night. Sure. I think the most important things about it, first of all, the most, as far as uh, an issue that is never brought up on the pro-choice uh, side mm -hmm. is the revisitation of the event on the mother that has an abortion. Because, and that was one of the things, the, the long-term ramifications, uh, in other words, when you reflect on that years and years later, and it's a traumatic experience unless they completely knock you out, that is going to come back to haunt the person. Unless they just don't have any feelings at all. Well, and one thing and, that they did in the film, and again, I'm, I'm trying to avoid giving too much away, but there yeah. is there is a scene where they did exactly what you're talking about and they did it before she had the big change. In other words, right. before she even thought abortion was completely wrong, she still had remorse even back when she was working at Planned Parenthood and thought she was doing the right thing. And I thought right. that was an important thing that the film did as well. And one thing it puts into perspective too, because of the number of years, the scope of abortion, the yep. lives that are lost, uh, over a period of time, because if even for people that are, are as adamantly pro-life as we are, mm -hmm. days and weeks and months and years go by, and it pops into our consciousness, but every day, thousands and thousands and thousands of kids are lost. Every day. Today, too. After we saw the movie last night, hundreds, maybe thousands of, of babies have been lost. Well, and that's one thing that I do think the movie kind of hit the nail on the head that when you're looking back at it, there were, I think that she said she worked there for eight years yes. and had performed 22,000 abortions. Yeah, that's I wasn't going to give the number, but that's, yeah, that's, it was That's at one tiny clinic. Yes. Yeah. So I, I do think that as far as the scope of the problem, I do think that it actually did a pretty good job of that. I, I think you're right on that. Thank you so much for your thoughts. I appreciate sure. it. All right. And I think that he's he's 100% right. And one thing that I thought it did well on, too, is, and I think that this may be the the best part of the whole thing. And I know that this is going to sound weird, but I promise, stick with me. I do have my reasons. Just let me reason it out here. One thing about this movie is that it doesn't show e either side as completely good or completely uh, evil either. And here's what I mean on that. I promise, it sounds weird. Stay with me. It does portray abortion as evil and pro-lifers as good. But it also shows 
that there is incorrect behavior on both sides. And what I mean by that is, you see in the film, and I just alluded to it not too long ago, that there are people that claim to be pro-life that make bad decisions because of their pro-life stance. It's not enough to be right. You also have to be right in the right way. So just because you happen to be right on an issue doesn't mean that any anything that you do, any action that you take as a result of being right is justified. And one thing that they did show was they showed a person that shot an abortion doctor and killed him, which doesn't make any sense because if you're pro-protecting life, it doesn't make sense to take somebody's life, even if they are somebody that has done incredibly horrible, wicked things in cold blood when he's unarmed like that. And another thing that it showed was people that claimed to be pro-life that were shouting people down, calling young women whores and, you know, saying all kinds of evil, terrible things about them in front of the Planned Parenthood facility there. And there are other groups of people, other Christians there that are pro-life that don't do that, that take a different approach that is far more effective. And so it shows that the pro-life side is not completely without blame and also shows that your approach does matter. Now, one thing that I want to bring up here is I think that the biblical principle of teaching the truth in love applies. Because the people that were yelling and insulting and trying to scare the young women that were going into the clinic, all that did was drive them into the building faster. And what they were saying may or may not have been true, but truth without love is just brutality. We're called to be true, truth tellers. We don't lie to people. We don't sugarcoat things. But we also don't have to beat them over the head with the truth either. And I think that that's a biblical example, and it's an example that was sort of modeled in this film. And I also think equally important is it showed a different side of, of the people in Planned Parenthood, because of course, the main character is somebody that works for Planned Parenthood, so you expect that at least a little bit going into it. But it also portrayed a lot of her co-workers that are there at Planned Parenthood as people that have good intentions. And that's important because even the pro-lifers that were handling it the wrong way, they had good intentions, but they had the wrong approach. And then on the other side of it, there were people, women that worked for Planned Parenthood that had good intentions, they just didn't have truth. So one side lacked truth, the other side lacked love. And in Planned Parenthood's case, they basically said, well, this is a bad situation and we make the bad situation go away, therefore we're doing a favor for these women and we're actually helping them. And it takes the character a long time to get to the point where she realizes that she's lying to them that she's telling them to do something that is not good and not right and not helpful. And so because of that, and because it does show that other side, there are a couple of characters that know what they're doing and they understand what's actually going on. And they there's really no redemption for them. And I'm not saying that their sins couldn't be forgiven. I'm saying that, you know, there's no redeeming qualities for them in this portrayal of this particular movie. But there's a lot of characters in there that were on the pro-choice, pro-abortion side of it that it's portraying they actually think they're doing the right thing. And I think that's important to remember because if we remember that they think they're in the right, it is going to cause us to show a little bit more compassion and maybe change our approach. Because if we continue to think of everybody as monsters, it's going to be very far. It's going to be very difficult for us to reach out to somebody. And we have to also remember that we've been engaged in sin, and we have done things that we thought was the right thing to do at the time, only to look back and realize that we were completely wrong. Anybody that hasn't done that is either not thinking, or thinks far too much of themselves, and doesn't realize their own shortcomings. So that's part of the reasons that I thought that it was it was a really important film from that direction. And I'll say this about it as well, just sort of as a passing thought. A lot of conservatives are saying that it didn't deserve the R rating. 
And while I understand where they're coming from, and I do agree with their analysis that a movie that wasn't anti-abortion that agreed with the politics of the people rating the movies, honestly, the same stuff being showed in that movie probably doesn't get an R rating. That's probably safe to say. However, personally, just coming at it from my perspective, what taking the, trying to take the politics out of it as much as possible, if I were watching this movie and you ask me how I would rate it, I would probably give it an R rating too. Because if we're saying that it doesn't deserve an R rating, what we as conservatives are sort of saying is, well, an abortion isn't something that is a traumatic, horrible thing to witness, even though it is. And that's one thing that we've got to remember is that if we are saying, well, it doesn't deserve an R rating, aren't we somewhat implying that witnessing an abortion take place isn't something that is deeply troubling and disturbing to people? Now, do I think that my fellow conservative brethren are correct in saying that it probably got its R rating because of politics and because people didn't want teenagers to see this movie? Yeah, I think that's probably a fair assessment. But whether or not the reason behind the rating is correct or incorrect doesn't mean that the rating itself is incorrect. That being said, if you are a parent, especially if you have teenagers, I think that this is a very important movie for them to see. And there are parts where it is graphic, and there are parts where it is very, very hard to watch. But it is worth it. Because its graphicness and the, I don't even want to say gore, but the, the, the more disturbing scenes are what forces you to sort of look this issue in the face and remember that's, some, that's an image that's going to stick with you. That's an image that you're going to be able to remember when you're thinking about what is actually happening and what is actually going on when people talk about different kinds of abortions, that kind of thing. So arming yourself with knowledge, I think, is, is something that is important, even if it is disturbing and uncomfortable. And the movie tells you right out, I think in the very first scene, that it says the, the story is going to make you squirm a little bit. And certainly they were not right. There were scenes where I have a very strong constitution, a very strong stomach. I'm a news guy. I've seen ISIS behead people. I mean, I've seen some of the most grotesque things you'll ever see. And it made me very uncomfortable. So I get that the movie is going to be a little bit hard to watch at times, but I do think that the overall message is worth it. And it is a movie that, in my opinion, every single person should see. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.